Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So yeah, um, so I just want to do like a little tarot and chill type of thing. Um, as you can see, I got me a new wig, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see this dark teal realness right now, but yes, it's it. You probably can't see it that good. I think you can see a little bit, right? But I know when I go outside, like, in the daytime, in the sun, I know it'll, like, the color will really pop or whatever. But, yeah, so, it's good for a little change. I don't think this wig is going to last. I bought this wig before in a different color, and it was much more softer. So, I guess it's just the luck of the draw with this company that I ordered from. Um, because the first time I ever bought it from them, I bought a black one. And it was so soft, so silky. It only lasted for like a month before it got all crusty and thin. But it was a nice little burn. A couple wears. So I don't think this is going to last to my birthday. My birthday at the end of this month. So I don't think it's going to last that long. But um, I'm going to just deal with it, rock with it, lean with it, rock with it. You know, um, it's okay. You know, I'm going to buy a second wig. So my cousin laid my wig for me. She's my wig installation technician. So she she lays that. She do my lashes and everything. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, get a new look together. I was rocking the same blonde wig for like four months. And, you know, it was my baby. It carried me for some, through some times, you know. So let's try, you know, about time to have something a little bit more differently. So um, anyway. This is Tarot and Chill. Um, I wanted to, like, talk about um, the dream that I had. Um, and it's interesting because I was sleeping. I just bought this. Um, just picked it up. It was, I think, Thursday. Thursday, Wednesday, I picked this up. And... I've been sleeping with it under my bed. I'm still, like, you know, reading uh, the book, um, the guidebook, getting a sense for all the other cards, because I'm good with the Zodiac cards and the planet cards, but they have some other, like, mini planets, like uh, Juno and Ceres and, and Pallas something. It's all these, like, other little smaller planets that they covered um, and other, like, other terminology that's really like deep in astrology, like booty deep in astrology, and uh, you know me, I just you know I know the basics. Um, so I'm reading, still reading that, and just getting a sense of the cards. But anyway, I've been sleeping with this under my bed, under my pillow. So every time I buy a new deck, I sleep with it under my pillow, just like I did with African Goddess. Rising. Shout out to Abriella um, Abrams. I absolutely love this deck too. You know, I feel like this deck activated me. Like it, it made me different having this in my possession. I feel like, and I feel like I activated all of the goddesses, all of the goddesses that are on here. But um, yeah. But on to this one, I um, slept with this under my pillow for the past couple of days, and uh, I, you know was smoking my blue lotus with my weed, drinking blue lotus tea as well. And if you look at my community post, I had a hell of a dream. And it was definitely a lot about travel and diversity and you have to read the whole thing. I can't go I can't go like on there, but you'll have to read the, the community post. But I think it has a lot to do with these cards. Um, cause in this dream, I was practicing telekinesis or practicing making things occur with my mind. I was just like this, I was just doing a little stuff and closing my eyes. Even in the dream state, like I still closed my, I could still close my eyes. I don't know if anybody ever tried that in a dream. You close your eyes, it, you actually do see black. Um, but anyhow, um, so I 
was able to, and it was interesting because I gave myself a reading earlier today with these two cards, with these two decks here. And what was interesting is what I had saw in the dream, which was this, like, you know how it looks like, like a sunset in L.A. where it has all these pretty colors, you know, pink and orange and magenta and purple and violet, and it's just all blended together. And then the sun has this beautiful orange reddish kind of glow and it just looks so beautiful um the cards that i had pulled out for both decks showed that exact same sun that way it had the same color schemes that sun that's about to set and uh one of the cards that i had pulled out in regards to my dreams called descendants um so i wanted to share this this that particular card uh, because uh, if you read my community tab, like you could read it right now while I'm talking to you, and <laughs> you can read it right now while I'm talking to you or whatever, and like let me, um, and I had did like a reading pretty much, you know, um, with the African Goddess Oracle, I just did like a weekend read, you know, just a little pre cards, and then, um, hold on a second. Oops. Well, actually, you could do reversals with this card, says the author. But um, for now, I'm just going to keep them upright until I get a handle of all, on all of them. Um, yes, I got this card, Descendant. And this is the first reading that I've given myself. Uh, this was the first card that I pulled out, which is about partnerships and having to work with your partnerships and um I got this card right here. Okay. And so let me show you the descendant one. You see the color scheme? This is exactly what I saw in my dream. And then the African goddess oracle cards that I pulled up, some of the goddesses on there, there's it has that same exact sun such as the creativity card for seven, the seven sisters. That one had that same color scheme of the sunset, how the sky looks and everything. So it's just like this, same color scheme. So it's interesting. Okay, so let me read this to you guys. I'm still connecting with the cards. Um, like I say, you know, um, this is like a passport or something because I was able to do more things in my dream and like what I did was like I changed the weather um, or I changed like the sky like the time of day okay um, I closed my eyes even in, the, the, in that dream space or astral experience I closed my eyes and I'm like I want it to be lighter outside because it was nighttime at first. And I was like, I want it to be light outside. And I'm at this park, you know, with benches and shit. And as soon as I opened up my eye, I seen that the, the sun, the same, you know, the sunset colors and all that stuff. And it was just so beautiful. And I was just like, wow. And then so I started looking around. And I see like forested looking trees, and I love palm trees because I'm originally from California, and I don't I am Gaucho, okay, because of my family, whatever. So I like that whole. I like that's why I like California. I like Florida. I like the islands. I love palm trees. I have this thing about palm trees um, that I really, really, really love and appreciate. So in my dream, I was just going like this. I said, "All right, I want palm trees." I started going like this with my hands, like this. And as soon as I was doing that, it was palm trees coming up. Like, <laughs> it's like I had palm trees just coming up just by my hand. Like I was basically practicing magic in the astronaut and like learning how to do things with my mind on command, looking at my hands, making my nails grow, like that kind of thing. Like, so I've done that before in a dream, but I don't do it as often. And I feel like sleeping with this deck under my pillow kind of opened me up because this is called Star Codes. So this artwork and all the symbolism and everything, I'm sleeping with all of this under my pillow. So I think it had a lot to do with it, you know. 
Um, but yeah, I was just going like this uh, with my hands, like, I want this, I want this. And it was, start, it was happening. And I was like, oh my God, I'm making all these palm trees. Cool. All right. Cool. Like that. And then um, I said, okay, I'm going to test it even more. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to see someone, a particular someone, right? So I was like, yeah, I'm going to see um, Beloved. He's going to walk up to me right now or whatever. I said, let me see if it works. Sure enough. Sure enough. He walks up to me. Like I said, I'm in, like, this park. Like, it's, it's like a park area with, like, benches and, like, maybe, like, a pier um, in the short distance away. It's kind of like that, you know? And uh, <clears throat> I see somebody walk in, and they look like a dark figure. But as soon as I, you know, as soon as I had closed my eyes and said this is the person that I want to see, I just wanted to test it out to see if it would work. And that person came, appeared to me right after I said, you know, in my mind, for to come. So I saw the person, whatever, I embraced the person, whatever. And the scenes kept changing. I, what I noticed is that as soon as I master something, master like a challenge, I neutralize a threat, it's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, we'll go to the next scene. Let's see if you can handle this. And then... um if you look at my community post towards the ending, somebody takes my picture. So, you know, when I got up, I remember most of everything. And I definitely remember towards the end of my dreams as well, not only about my picture being taken at a booth, um, but also there was some numbers on a ball or something. And it was poking right there, like, looking at looking at me. And it said 1111. One ball said 11. The other ball said 11. The other one said 44. The other one said 44. So 11, 11, 44, 44, or 11, 44. When I saw it, I was like, cool. Um, so I'm definitely feeling this Lionsgate energy, definitely with the sun. Definitely with the sun. I went to the beach earlier this week with my daughter, and we were looking at the sun, looking at the moon and stuff. I was watching. I was doing sun gazing and watching the sunset, and, uh Yeah. So it's interesting that my oracle reading with both of these decks, all of them came out with the sunset color. So, yeah, it's definitely the Leo season energy because the sun is in Leo. And uh, I think we're having a, a new uh, full moon coming up. I don't know in what, um, is it full moon Sag? If I'm not mistaken, I think it's a full moon Sag coming up. Uh, so we have that coming on, and then we have the Lionsgate portal. So I'm definitely feeling that energy. I've been really, like, drowsy, kind of low-key. Just, yeah, I don't know. Um, but the dream was very, very interesting. Like, me, like, I felt like I was in training. Like, I felt like I was in training. I was um, literally, sorry, I felt like I was in training. Like, I was literally, like, practicing telekinesis or mental magic or whatever. I was making things appear with my hands and um, just kind of commanding it, assuming it. That's what I was doing. Like, you know how, like, when you're a call center representative, when you're a sales rep, you assume the sale? That's what I was doing in the astral realm. I was assuming that, I was assuming the manifestation. I was assuming it. And uh, one of the cards that I got from my, when I did a reading for myself today, I did get the manifestation card. I got manifestation creativity um, card. Um, there was a lot of diversity in my dream, a lot of travel, a lot of me uh, connecting with the person and then seeing different versions of this person. Some could have been imposters, I ain't going to lie. I was like, you are not him. And then others were kind of like, distorted versions of him, maybe past lives or or whatever. Like it was like distorted dimensional versions. And I've had dreams like that before where you know it's you but you look slightly different. Like I sometimes I'll catch myself in the mirror when I'm dreaming in an ashram, I catch myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh I look kinda different. My features be a little different. Sometimes I'm I'm thick, sometimes I'm skinnier, sometimes I'm taller. Sometimes my hair is a little different. My eyes are even more bigger than my natural eyes is. <laughs> um, and 
of other people too. I dream of like a distorted um, version of them, you know, as well. So it it was it was interesting. So, anyways, uh, sorry guys. So this is the card right here. This is called the Descendant. Now I know about the Ascendant, but I have not heard of the Descendant. And it was very very interesting. Um, so I pulled this card out in. Um, I think I pulled. Did I do like a three card reading? I did. I pulled out this one. This was in actually in regards to my dream. So let me pull this one out too. This is the mid. Haven, pinnacle. You know they say when they reach the pinnacle of their success, that word helps me to recognize what this card is about. To reach the pinnacle of your success. So your mid haven. Oh, sorry. Your mid haven is a representation of the highest you can go, like reaching your full potential, self actualization, the highest you can go into this life. Mid haven, pinnacle, reaching the pinnacle of your success. This is what I got when I asked Spirit about my dream that I posted on my community tab. So notice that they are in number sequence. This is 36, card 36, and this is card 37. 3 plus 6 equals 9. That is completion and accomplishment. And then this one, oh, sorry, this is a completion and accomplishment. My bad, 36, right? And then this one right here is 37, which equals 10, which equals 1, a new beginning. So look, okay, this was in regards to my dream. So let's read that one first. I'm kind of glad that um, Spirit pointed that out for me. All right, let's just go in numerical order. All right, so this is the Midhaven card. It says the Midhaven contains clues about how your family trains you to be visible in this world. Your relationships to other people's authority, how you step into your own personal authority. It describes, sorry, can you guys see this one? I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Okay, I think that's better. Um, where was I? Okay. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. The midhaven is the highest point of the chart, okay? The pinnacle. Okay, pinnacle where the sun would be at midday. And notice when they said where the sun would be at midday, like all the cars I was pulling up shows the sun when it's like um, like an afternoon sun, just like in my dream. So it was interesting I pulled this car up, and then it says in the guidebook that um, where the midhaven is the highest point of the chart where the sun would be at midday. This most public, this is the most public and most visible point of the chart that acts like a flagpole on top of your personal castle. Action. Inventory your personal reputation and ask what you can do to strengthen it. Update your website. Look at your definition of success and make sure that it is your own. Actually, uh, what's that? Actually makes you happy and is not something that you inherited from your family or your mentor. So this is kind of like, I feel like the dream was um, helping me to define power, like helping me, like training me to, um, I don't know how to describe it. It makes sense to me, but I don't know how to put it in words. I feel like the dream with this car here, I feel like the dream was um, inspiring me to think outside the box, that I can make whatever happen, happen. And just because I was taught a certain way or raised a certain way, I was in this society or community that told me that I couldn't do all these things. Here I am in this in this astral world where it's limitless and I can do whatever the fuck I any, anything that I want and be what I want and reach the pinnacle of my success, right? Um so then it says, um look at your definition of success and make sure it's your own, right? So stepping outside the box Stepping outside, like creating your own narrative, stepping outside of what has been taught by me, what has been drilled in my head since I have bond, you feel me? Um, think about the training that you've received from these authorities and notice where it still serves you and where you need to release these um, preconceptions and step into something bigger, step into my purpose. So Spirit was showing me you can have these things. Let me show you how you train your mind. I'm going to show you how to use your mind power for here. When you wake up, I want you to do the same thing. You may need to go back to hidden dreams. Remember, I, I pulled this card up in regards to a dream. Okay, check it. 
You may need to go back to a hidden dream or reawaken an ambition that you that may not make sense to anybody else. So this is telling me that I need to um, do some type of like project, whatever ambitions that I put on the back burner, uh, maybe out of like self-consciousness, uh, embarrassment, maybe not thinking that I'm not going to have any support or whatever the case is. It's telling me that I need to reawaken that ambition, okay? Even if the, if the ambitions that I do doesn't make sense to anybody, as long as it makes sense to me, okay? It says, if you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outside world, your midhaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define the mountaintop for yourself. Take the next step in that direction. Okay, so since the challenge is traditions, other people's expectations, or your family's history may be complementary to your idea of your own potential, but they may be hurdles to overcome as you find your true path. And I am already have been in the process of my shadow work is kind of releasing all narratives that do not work for me and kind of going my own way. That's kind of been my whole thing throughout my shadow work, my healing journey, is like divorcing any type of roles that society says I should play. Like I'm creating my, I'm defining my own version of what femininity can be. I'm just not going by group think, not going by society think, global think, me, you know, um, and kind of unlearning and creating a new narrative for myself, something that I like, something that's outside the box, something that makes sense to me, okay? And it says the gift of that is underneath all the worldly sense of ambition is a soul longing to live out its full potential. So it's just a reminder to live out my full potential. So what I was doing in my dream was practicing my mental magic practice. I was in training. Practicing. Sorry, I got Um... I was practicing mental magic and practicing how far my potential can go. Like, what's the most that I can achieve, you know? Um, and maybe I was surrounded by all those different people because these people probably represent, well, they're backdrop people, but I feel like these, these backdrop people all represent um, old, outdated beliefs and narratives and so spirit wants me to think outside the box so I can reach my full potential so really that's my purpose right <clears throat> so yeah I'm definitely um feeling this um this Lionsgate energy is coming in early because every car that I pulled had a sun in it every car that I pulled had a sun in it today all right all right and then uh let's do descendant this is right afterwards, okay? Um, I know what my ascendant is. My ascendant is um, Sagittarius. All right, this is descendant. I never heard of this one, so let's check it out. This is called invitation. It says, while the um, ascendant describes how you enter the world, the descendant is a place where you invite equal others to come into your world, Okay. It describes how you see these peers, what you project upon them, and what you are trained to respect in them. The descendant is where the sun would be at sunset. Notice, just like in my dream, sunset colors. So I essentially pretty much think that I dreamt about this car, maybe. Okay, so it says action, right? The sun at sunset. All of the cars that I pulled out had a sun, like an afternoon sun, evening sun, sunset. Just like in the other day, the African God's Oracle. Action, look at how you invite others to dance with you, to relate. Be welcoming while also keeping healthy boundaries in place. And that's what I have um, been working on, and I'm proud of myself. I'll, you know, So it's saying that I, I should be open to new experiences with people um, living with detachment. I have it written down right here. Live with detachment, love without attachment, which is what the energy that I got from this card. Not to be too intense, not to think as others as if they owe me anything, um, but at the same time, like still like speaking my mind, but just doing it in a compassionate way, not acting like other people are an extension of myself, okay? So then it says here, oops, sorry, my card's about to drop. Um, 
One, okay, so it says, yeah, be welcoming, but still keep your healthy boundaries. Once you feel comfortable about those ground rules, the people, for the people that you bring into your life, it'll be easier for you to open your heart, be easier to trust. Okay, this is the part that got me right here. It says, if you notice that you keep people at a distance or avoid meeting new people, investigate this habit. Though it might have been important to protect you at one time in your life, consider how it is working for you now and what would you and what would help you feel safe enough to open this door. So the fact that I keep myself distant from others because of a lack of trust and issues, uh, past uh, issues that were brought to me or whatever the case is, it, of course, when you don't trust the body and you keep everybody distant, it does keep you safe. But then on the flip, the flip side of the coin is you may miss out on meaningful relationships and certain lessons and things like that just because you're a scared of trusting uh, people because you know how people could be. So it's kind of like, you know, I have like mixed feelings toward that. So I'm definitely going to be working on that um, this lion's gate and this Leo season because the Leo season, they operate from their heart and it's all about operating from a place of love, of compassion. That's why I always noticed that even before I knew what the lion's gate was, I was always saying that how much I loved the month of August. I was always in a cheerful, happy mood and I have a Leo stellium as well, so all three planets in the eighth house, Leo, okay? Um, three different planets, right? So that adds on to that energy as well, that solar energy too. And so it's like <clears throat> every time I get around August, I'm always so happy. Of course, it's my birthday month. Um, Leo season and Virgo season, I just be like having this immense good luck. I'm happy. I'm more so willing to like talk to people. Uh, I'm more outgoing, more so willing to reconcile people. I used to always joke that if you ever wanted to make a, make uh, an olive branch towards me, you better hit me up around my birthday season. If you don't, I'm gonna be looking at you like you got shit on your face. I always, <laughs> I always used to say that like if there was any other time of a year where you can get me to actually like to like I guess like reconcile or like be cordial. If you want to catch me in a good mood, in the best mood ever, <laughs> catch me around my birthday, I'll be more easy to talk to. Any other time of the year, I'll be like, you know. So, <laughs> anyway, so then um, it says, also notice in what areas of your life you ask other people to do the work for you, which I don't. But, you know, it was good to read um, all of this right here. It's basically saying um, not to put all the effort on like you know getting close to people and, and intimacy not to put all the responsibility on the intimacy on the other person so i definitely i read that part and um understood it um it says if you are an extrovert who inwardly craves emotional and spiritual intimacy you might draw in someone who helps you feel cozy at home it's wonderful when others can help you develop latent characteristics within yourself so there's something to learn from everybody, you know. That's what I got from it. Like there's something to learn from everyone. And being around certain people will help me develop certain skills or help me to develop uh, characteristics that may be helpful. Um, but if you ask them to do this work for you and they leave, there goes your resource. If you see them as only an extension of yourself, you can't really see them. When you develop your own resources, you can see these gifts as a whole, beings with their own needs and own gifts. So not seeing other people as an extension of yourself. So that's a big one there. The challenge is you give power, you give your power away when instead of working together, you ask others to be what is missing for yourself. So that's like trying to force people to make you happy. Like if you don't love yourself, you're looking for somebody to love you more than you love yourself. Like that type of thing. A uh, gift. Tend the inlet to your heart. Invite in relationships that are clear, that are healing, that are nurturing, self-responsible, and encouraging a mutual evolution. So those are the, pretty much the like the main main message out of the the cards that I have pulled. Okay, and it says invitation. Okay, that it's time for me to open my mind, open my heart, and invite people. Uh, uh, into my life to be more social, to be more seen. So I'm going to work on that during um, the Lions Gate. And in the dream state, I was pretty much like um, 
practicing magic um, using my midhaven energy, the pinnacle, trying to see what's my potential. I'm testing out, like I'm test driving my potential um, in the astral uh, world and practicing my manifestation and things are manifesting for me at my verbal and mental command. So, yeah, I'm going to continue sleeping with this under. I feel like I'm connecting deeper and deeper. I feel like there's a lot of different, like, the symbolisms, the fact, you know, and um, since the Lionsgate is coming up in a few days, we're also going to be getting more light codes and things like that. So I feel like it's kind of all coming together. I got this deck right on time. All right. Another thing is, oh, hold on a second. All right, y'all. So, shout out to the corner, uh, the occult corner store. This is their business card right here. I just got, I just got this. This is their business card. You can follow them on the Instagram. All right, I um, just got these two oils on time, which is great because since I'm going to be start. Since it's my birthday month, I want to start going out and celebrating. I just got my hair done. I need to buy some clothes, do some laundry. Well, actually, I need to do some laundry first. So, yeah. Um, they buy a few tops. That's about it. But uh, tops and accessories. That's about it. I'm not going to do too, too much. But anyway, um, I knew that <laughs> since I was going to be going back out again, I wanted to make sure that I had my gang gang oil. And y'all know I love my gang gang oil. And I told y'all my story time about how potent this oil is. So I order the oil. They ship very fast. I I don't know where they live, but I live in Cali, so my shit is um, quick. So wherever they live, they must live like uh, not too far, not too far from California. Um. So anyway, I got the Gang Gang oil right here. Um. Notice the bottle looks different. They changed their bottle up. Instead of the clear glass bottle, it it has a black bottle, which I like it this way. It's just all black. It's cool. Because nobody can see the color of the oil. Nobody can see what's in there, you know. And it kind of looks like a perfume or something like that. Um, obviously, this is a Apollo symbol. And this is called Gang Gang Oil right here. Very, very good stuff. Very, very potent stuff. And it's crazy because it came just on time today. It came just on time. And I was over at a relative's house, and I had one of my baby cousins like, yeah, you going to go to this event? I'm like, damn, it's been a while since I've been around that type of crowd. I was like, it's been a while, but I was thinking about it today. Damn, I'm about to have a damn anxiety attack. Like, I'm not trying to have repeat no shit that happened last year. Like, you know, um, I do want to celebrate my birthday month. I want to celebrate life, celebrate Virgo season, of course, of course, of course. But, um, you know, I'm just not trying to, you know, have any repeat, rerun type of energies around me. So I was thinking about that. I said, damn, I do want to party, but I'm just like, damn, I got to think about this shit. Woo-woo. So anyways, my gang gang oil came right on time. It does come with a dropper. So it looks like they, because um, usually the gang gang oil is like a dark brownish red. And this one is more of like an amber color. It's like kind of like the color of like like yellow, like pea. It's kind of like that color now. Um, but yeah, I love the the bottle. I'm definitely not gonna throw this bottle away because the sticker that's on there that's symbol. So I can always just keep the bottle because it looks too nice. I wouldn't throw it away. That's a waste. Um, anyways. So I got a new oil that I have never, ever, ever tried. It's called Tips and Scales. And um, this is uh, when it comes to uh, spiritual justice or physical, like legal justice, okay, to tip the scales in your favor, okay. Um, this is what the oil looks like. So pretty much the same color. I definitely do smell like a type of alcohol. They put some type of alcohol in here. Yeah, like rubbing alcohol. Kind of like a certain alcohol smell to it. 
Yeah, but this is uh, tip the scales here, and you can see the sign, the Apollo sign. So shout out to them. Let me smell this one. It doesn't have a vomitous smell. It doesn't really have like a huge, huge smell, which is is which is fine by me. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be using this. I'm going to be taking this. This is going to be in my motherfucking purse. Okay, in my motherfucking purse. Period. Period. This is like a credit card. Don't leave home without it. And this shit really, really, really fucking works. It works. I used it. It worked. I didn't have no problems, no issues, no nothing. I'm trying to make sure none didn't fly in my drink. But I'm glad that I got it because I was just like, damn, I want to go out. And you know how it is when you're around large crowds and there's been like some crazy stuff happening in LA and around the world from what I heard. I don't watch the news too much, but you know, I be hearing people chit chatting on social media. Um, you know, going out in public places and, you know, all this weird stuff going on. So I just wanted to just layer myself with like extra protection. I know I'm a divine one, so that's why people be wanting me around, you know, because it's like, okay, if Cassie's there, <laughs> this thing gonna go down that bad. It ain't gonna be that bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I go to a public place and something bad was supposed to happen there, it'll be, that plan will be thwarted because I walked in. And there may, may be other chosen ones that walk in that day. And our presence was required that particular day. And we shit gave motherfuckers a break. They don't even fucking know it. So I feel like I, you know, I feel like I had that about me. But I always want to extra have like an extra layer of protection. Like it's good to always know that as long as you're vibrating high, that is your own protection. As long as you have faith and know that your spirit guides and your ancestors and your deities are riding for you, that's cool. But then I also feel like, as a divine, you have to also do your part, too, making sure our vibrations are up. Um, any negative thoughts that we have, just allow ourselves to feel it. Don't kick ourselves down. Like, we're supposed to be thinking positive. Sometimes I do have to tell myself to put up. I do do that. I'm like, let's look at that. But don't beat yourself up about it. Feel that thought. Okay. All right. I'm done with that. Let me switch it up to something else. So we have to do our part, too, and, you know, that's one of the things that I have to do. And then also, of course, you know, spiritual bathing, clearing my energy, and getting this motherfucking oil. <laughs> so, um, anyways, shout out to them. Mm. All right, we have 37 minutes in. So I want to give you guys some themes for the weekend. For my collective. So if you guys can take a little message and then I'll be out. Sorry, 30 minutes already. I didn't want to be here too, too long. I just wanted to tell you guys, like, just in connection with what I um, had posted in my community post. And, like, this is just the experience that I got. This recent Astro experience uh, is um, pre Lionsgate, but also the Star Core, Star Cold. Astro Oracle deck, sleeping with it under my deck is like unlocking me to new abilities. All right, Spirit, let's see what the energy is looking like for um, my followers, my divines this weekend, Spirit. Spirit, African goddesses, let us know what's going on for the weekend. Anything that you would like us to know. All right, self-sabotage, really be mindful, like, okay, of course, it's summertime, we still have the summer left, um, be mindful of, 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 like, have fun, but don't, like, yeah, this is probably for me, too, okay, um, don't self-sabotage, okay, don't go backwards, you know, you put so much work in, like, why, you know what I'm saying, two plus four equals six, and so the number on the card is 24, and six is healing, so do not sabotage your healing journey, okay? Do not sabotage your healing journey. That's Mama Lambo. All right? So that's just a pretty much straight up message. Not to self-sabotage. So don't do too, too much. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to definitely keep that in mind this weekend. Like, to really make sure that I don't put myself in a position 
where I sabotage myself or uh, sacrifice myself or anything like that. So definitely want to keep that in mind. Nothing. I don't want anything to sabotage my healing journey because I have been doing so well this year. Like, I've been doing so well. I've actually honored my New Year's resolution of not allowing any type of, like, you know, negative, phony, fraudulent, fake-ass fucking shit. And last year was a good year, so I'm not going to lie. Last year was a good year, but there was some fraudulent energy going on, and and it wasn't coming for me. So I made a promise to myself this year, 2022, that I was going to move just like I did in 2020, and so far, so good, right? So I feel like when when you're on your healing journey and you're making strides, spirit is saying not to eat, not to like, not to fuck it up, basically, you know. Don't allow anybody to take to take you off of your square, take you on your path. You can still stop, smell the roses, stop, have fun, do do what you do. Like be of the world for a minute, you know, because we can't be spiritual all the time, all day, every day. Sometimes we just have to very much just be in the world, you know, just to give yourself a break. You know, you don't want to be too tapped in. Yeah. And that's another thing too. You don't want to be too tapped in. With your healing journey with spirituality, you don't want to be too too tapped in because you don't you won't have like a firm grip on reality. Okay, so I just believe in just like a, having a balanced, more of like a balanced approach. You can very much be of the world and have fun and not take things too seriously. Uh, live with detachment, love without attachment, and not have no fears of anybody trying to betray you or sabotage you or you sabotage. You. I think just even thinking that way is self-sabotaging, it's pulling us back from our healing, because we, we're, here we are dredging things up again from the past. Oh, because of what I went through in the past. It's always like that, right? So, let nothing deter your healing journey, okay? It's okay to relax, it's okay to whatever. As long as you're conscious of what you're doing, but do not... Um, you know, be really mindful of, of negative self-talk and self-sabotage, okay, especially after, you know, making so much strides uh, this year. Congratulations. All right, this popped out, too. This is betrayal, all right? So do not betray yourself, okay? Do not self-sabotage and do not betray yourself, okay? This is the Aunt Nancy card. Aunt Nancy, Anansi, all right? This talks about um, betrayal, to be mindful, okay, especially with with the 20, which is equals out to 2, which is about balance, okay, all right, so do not betray yourself when you're seeking balance and reciprocity in your relationships, when you are not setting clear boundaries, like what I said with that, um, that um, not the Midhaven card, but the Descendant card, like, be open to new experience and new people, but set healthy boundaries, for anybody that's going to come into your life. So when you set those healthy um, uh, boundaries, if you don't do those things, you're betraying yourself and you're attracting betrayal. You're attracting uh, agents of saboteur, thus sabotaging yourself because you're conscious of what you're attracting and you're still attracting it, right? So um, so when it comes to this like, betrayal card, don't betray yourself. When it comes to seeking balance and reciprocity in your relationship, when it comes to getting the respect and the appreciation that you uh, deserve, do not betray yourself by not speaking up and setting those boundaries, okay? So don't go backwards. Anytime you start to feel that feeling where people want you to go backwards, people want you to be like how you were in the past or like how you were last year, how you were last week. If you want some new shit this week, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're going to have to do, do a t make a detour, okay? If somebody's trying to get you to self-sabotage, you know. All right, this is about soul forgiveness. Very important. This talks about... And then this comes out right after the betrayal card. So this also talks about, like I said, how we are all connected, okay? How we are all souls 
uh, essentially, minus all of this stuff, minus my skin, my flesh, everything else, minus the typical mundane 3D stuff, minus the ego. We're just all essentially souls. And you may not, you may choose not to deal with certain people or whatever, but you ain't got to hate them, okay? You ain't got to be all up in their face, hanging out with them, soaking up, you know, self-sabotaging yourself, putting yourself in the line to get betrayed again. You already know everybody's true nature, okay? You already know everybody's true nature, so it's okay. You can not fuck with people, but you can still have compassion for their soul, okay? Because they're, before all this other stuff, before, you know, personality disorders, entity attachments, all the stuff that we discuss often, essentially they're just a soul, just like you're just a soul. And there is a past life um, energy. You may have done something to them in the past that you have to go through this now and you got to end it out now. So you may have meant to go through uh, betrayal in this uh, particular lifetime with this soul that's in this individual Okay. You and then the on into this also talks about illusion. Okay, illusion and trickery. So maybe in in the past in a past life you have the you have tricked that person. You have provided illusions for them. You sabotaged them. You did whatever. And you may not understand that, but in this new in this current lifetime. Where I, where I, where we always talk about um, ending current contracts when we talk about like past life stuff. You're not only making peace with that person's soul, but you're making making peace with all of the past lives that they have. So you don't have to really, um, like the descendant card said, you can be welcoming, you can be gracious, allow people to be who they are, allow them to float as they have their own needs, gifts, wants, whatever. They are not extensions of you. They are their own soul with their own soul purpose. So Mbokomu is talking about forgiving your soul. Like, I may not fuck with you, 3D, but I, I love your soul. I got compassion for your soul. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, every, you know, everything else, when it's when it all comes down to any way you slice it, we're just we're both souls, all right. So you want to forgive that person's soul, and that cuts off that contract, that, you know, cuts off that karmic um, contract that cuts that that energetic etheric core that you have with people. These are people that have betrayed you. These are people that have um, trained you to self sabotage through their betrayal because you. You you keep getting betrayed, you attract this type of stuff, and then it's like you, um, I wouldn't say perpetuate it, but it kind of trains your mind to sabotage your own self because you figure if somebody else is going to do it, I might as well sabotage myself before somebody else does. These are things that we've learned, just like the descendant card. These are things that we've learned from family, from society, from our communities. So... Once we look at people as just like a soul, I think it'll be easier to kind of forgive. And again, with the quote, live with detachment, love without attachment, I have to put it up on my wall, um, you know, uh, just to remind myself, just when I'm having this talk and I'm just like, yeah, something, 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 I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. You know, sometimes you just really need those reminders. So, yeah, soul forgiveness, 2 plus 8 equals 10. That's 1. That equals up to 1. So in order to have this new beginning, in order to shift into a new paradigm, especially for this Lionsgate, this is the time to really quantum shift because we're going to be receiving a lot of light poles um, uh, from Sirius. And we'll be able to shift. Okay? We'll be able to manifest better. In order for us to do that, we have to forgive you know, forgive our soul and forgive the, the other souls or whatever. That they're just playing a role to make us realize how special we are. That's what they were meant to do. We're all actors in this sh one, this big ass motherfucker show. Um, where's my card? I don't think I dropped anything. Did I? Yeah, I dropped it. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. Um, All right, 
Pleasure. Okay, so somebody's going to be getting some action this weekend. I feel like some of you guys might, um, yeah, I just think it's going to be like self-love. Um, might have a partner. I'm definitely getting like pleasure-seeking, pleasure principle uh, this weekend. So I don't know, maybe you're loving up on yourself, you're loving up on somebody else. Yeah, so this is like um, pleasure she, uh, pleasure seeking this weekend. It's going to be very pleasure seeking. And this is a card that is about, it gives me sacral chakra to embrace who you are, you know, set healthy boundaries. It's also about setting healthy boundaries as well, too, because you're telling people what you want, what you deserve in the bedroom, you know. You want reciprocity, okay? And that card is 11, so I'm definitely getting twin energy. I feel like some of you guys may connect um, to your twin, okay, uh, this weekend, whether it's energetically, um, 5D or 3D, mundane or not, um, astral or mundane, whatever. I feel like you guys are going to connect with them through, um, through some type of, like, sexual telepathy. I'm getting that. Um, sexual telepathy and, like I said, pleasure uh, principle, okay? So it could be a lot of, like, sexual energy sent to each other, back and forth, sexual thought forms. And for some of you guys, you guys might actually link up with this person, okay, um, over the weekend or hear from them. But they're definitely feeling your energy very strong. And you have to understand that they're also dealing with the same thing. If they're your twin, they're also, you know, um, are supposed to be heeding the same messages that I'm delivering here, you know, getting over betrayal. Um, learning about soul forgiveness in order to go to the next level. They're going to have to forgive forgive themselves, forgive the situation, and maybe people that may not even deserve their forgiveness, but they're doing it for to get that new beginning. They don't want to cheat themselves out of that quantum shit. They don't want to cheat themselves out of a new beginning. So it's like, okay, fine. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I forgive you. Bye. Like, it's, it, it's just really letting go of the guilt. Okay. So that's what Tanny is about, um, seeking pleasure. So I think that's what you guys are going to be focused on. So uh, obviously for Lionsgate, I think it's going to be a lot of passion because Leos are very passionate. So, yeah, for Lionsgate, you guys are going to be feeling a lot of passion. Your heart chakra is going to be busted wide open. You're going to be feeling a lot more forgiving. You're going to be more willing to forgive um, and just let things just go. Like you're not giving people... Um, too much power over your reaction, your perception, your thoughts anymore. The three most important things, your reactions, your perception, your thoughts, the things that we have to master. Um, I feel like we, uh, when we learn the grand scheme of things, why these things happen and blah, 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 I feel like um, <clears throat> you guys, for the Lions, I feel like you guys are finally just getting it. You guys will be a lot more passionate, Okay. Uh, wanting to share more of your love, wanting to be more, a little bit more extroverted, okay? So, yeah, definitely pleasure principle this weekend, for sure. So, there's going to be a lot of, like, a passionate uh, love making. It could be, you know, uh, like I said, loving up on yourself, maybe masturbation. Um, sexual telepathy, remote seduction, I'm also getting that as well. This flips out on my altar just now, Atete, the Ethiopian goddess of worthiness. Okay, so yeah, this is just pretty much saying that you are um, worthy. Okay, cut out the negative self talk and you guys are worthy, deserving of love, deserving of uh, pleasure. Okay, you are deserving of forgiveness. You deserve to forgive yourself. Okay, all right, be gentle, be kind with yourself. Do not betray yourself, do not self sabotage. Okay, this is the stuff that we have learned right through society, through our communities, where our family had trained us to do, trained us to think and believe that we're not worthy, and that. Feeling not worthy does cause you to sabotage yourself. It does cause you to attract people who will betray you. Thus, you betraying yourself. And this makes it hard for you to uh, forgive. It, it turns you um, 
and into a person who can't trust, who can't, you know, and that goes back to the descendant card that I pulled. You know, where does that come from, that habit where you don't want people to be close to you? Because of that, it all ties back to worthiness and what we've been taught since we were kids, what's been drilled in our heads since we were children. So once we learn our self-worth and forgive our souls and understand that everybody is just an actor, I think it makes it easier to deal with. I think that's when you shift. That's when you enter the 5D consciousness. That's when you really shift. And I think the lion's gate is going to help a lot with, with that. Okay? Keep your vibrations as high as possible. Okay? No matter what you're around or who you're around, always, you know, have extra layers of protection like what I showed you, whatever that you guys do. Stay prayed up. All right, shine, okay? So the lion's gate, yes, Mama Jumbo wants you to shine, okay? Shine your light, okay? Ma Umi said, shine your light on the world. Shine your light for the world to see. That's what I'm getting from this card. Sometimes I get discouraged. I look around and things are so weak. People are so weak. Sometimes I feel like crying. Sometimes my heart gets heavy. Sometimes I just want to leave and fly away. <laughs> Sometimes I don't do what to do with myself. <laughs> so the passion takes over me. Yes, pleasure. Okay. Yeah. So understand that you are deserving of love. You're deserving of pleasure. It doesn't have... This is doesn't have to be the end all be all. Everybody that's going to come into your life is not going to betray you. And I know that's easier said than done, but um, not everybody is going to be coming to, to hurt us. We have to really put take that leap of faith and shine. We are we were meant to be seen. We are meant to shine. We are meant to feel worthy. Okay? We are meant to feel uh, pleasure. Okay? We are meant to be a little selfish. Pamper ourselves. I'm getting a lot of that, too, that self-care. Um, type of uh, energy for the lion's gate. So, yeah, definitely pamper yourself as well, okay? I know I will be doing that this month. But, yeah, definitely get, like, a good self-care, self-help type of routine together, all right? Nourish yourself, you know, be kind with yourself, okay? All right, one last card, y'all, and I'm out. I've been on here for about an hour. Don't take yourself too seriously and just have fun. Everything, everybody is just an experience. Everything's a lesson. The earth is one big ass motherfucking public school. You just you're gonna meet all different types of characters. You're gonna learn how to fight. You're gonna learn how to sit your ass down. You're gonna you're gonna learn all these different lessons. Everybody is helping you get to the next level. As soon as you get to the next level, the scene change. The, the it shit you shift okay uh, last card is alchemy so being able to make the best out of any situation this weekend so anything like anybody trying to hurl any type of negative energy you can neutralize it with love neutralize it with um, humor okay send it back with love because when we thinking about the soul forgiveness they just hurt me. <laughs> and they want other motherfuckers to feel hurt because they're not willing to work on whatever that they should work on. So that ain't got nothing to do with you. Anything that's thrown your way, you alchemize. Okay, you alchemize in these streets. Like my girl Tony Jones, shout out to her. I alchemize in these motherfuckers' streets. Never TT, okay? Right. So always making the best out of the situation. When people throw lemons at you, you make lemon meringue pie. People throw dirt on you, you make a dirt house. Okay, people throw bricks, throw don't know no names, throw bricks at you, you build a home, okay? You you basically, um, any bad situation that you're in, it gives you a chance for you, um, it gives you a chance for you to remix it, okay? So this is remixing bad memories, remixing negative thoughts, remixing bad relationships and things like that that haunt you, okay? You can alchemize all of that, okay? So that is what's going to be going on. So it's going to be a lot of that going on uh, this weekend is working on um, 
alchemizing, working on transmutation. Okay, mastering your thoughts. Okay, and reprogramming your mind and reprogramming uh, your heart so that your mind and heart can work together and not against each other. Okay, so that is pretty much um, all I have. Um, I'm still researching the many layers of my dream because there's so much different symbolism, but that was the um, most that I got out of it. So, yeah. It was very interesting because I haven't dreamt my beloved in a couple of months, in a while, and I wasn't sure what was going on there, but the dream showed me that I can make this happen that I ended up tapping into it. And before I had this dream, not only I was sleeping with this under my pillow, but um, I was also drinking blue lotus tea, and I was also doing meditation, uh, masturbation meditation too, I ain't gonna lie, um, that type of thing. Like uh, I do, you know, do sex magic and things like that. So, um, And it's just basically like, you know, loving up on myself and like looking at images of things that I want to manifest. I look at images of money. I do a lot of visualization while I'm um while I'm doing it. Uh, I think I have a video on it, meditation masturbation meditation. But it's definitely it's it's really a thing. So you guys should definitely get into it. It's really, really truly a thing. And it does help you. All you have to do is when you about to when you feel that orgasm, you wanna already have those images imprinted in your mind, you want to be in that moment, and you want to hold it just before you nut, you just hold it, and just hold that image in your mind, let it go, I got a video, so you'll have to look it up, but it's it's on there, it's on my channel, but um, it's about how I've done it, and that helps with the sacral chakra, that helps with the tannic card I just showed you about, uh, you deserve pleasure, okay? about embracing who you are. This is what makes you feel more worthy. And now on top of that, you're killing so many different birds at one stone. Not only you're visualizing success, but you're also bouncing out your 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 sac your lower chakra, your sacral chakra. You're feeling more grounded, more confident. You know, so I mean it all it all works out in the um, grand scheme of things. But um anyways guys, thanks for hanging out with me, um, you know, talking about my astral chronicles. And I gave you guys a oracle reading to, you know, to ponder about. Okay. So, peace, y'all. Good night.